From DocuSign, I'm Robert Knight, a member of the Developer Center team. In this screencast, I'll walk you through how to turn on API request logging and then show an example of how you can use log files to learn about DocuSign API requests and speed up developing your DocuSign apps. To follow along with this video, you'll need a DocuSign developer account. They're free. See the resources slide at the end of this video for a link to create your account. It's not required, but if you'd like to view code examples that show how to use DocuSign APIs, you can download a quick start in the language of your choice. DocuSign quick starts are executable projects that demonstrate example use cases for DocuSign APIs. A link to get a quick start is also on the resources slide. You can find videos explaining how to use quick start for all supported programming languages in our DocuSign for Developers channel on YouTube by searching for quick start. Today, we're going to look at the API request log for creating a click wrap. When turned on, API request logging captures the next 50 DocuSign API requests. You can download the resulting logs as a zip file. After the request logs are downloaded, you can clear the log files and re-enable logging to continue capturing API requests. To turn on request logging, log into your developer account, and from the DocuSign eSignature homepage, select your user icon in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and select My Preferences from the drop-down menu. On the General Settings page, click the Enable Logging button, and then click Save. If you see the Clear Logs button in the Request Logging section of the page, clear the existing logs before enabling logging. Now, let's return to the eSignature homepage in my developer account. For this demo, I'll create, activate, and test a click wrap to see which APIs are called. I click the Start button and select Create a Click Wrap from the drop down menu and enter a name in the edit box and click Save. For my click wrap document, I'm going to upload a picture of my cat, Huxley. Next, I enter a display title, select how a recipient will receive a copy of the click wrap, enter some text in the agreement statement edit box, then select save and close. I'm taken to the manage click wraps page where I'm going to activate my new click wrap. Next, I'll test it by entering any string and agree that Huxley is indeed majestic. Now I'll check the logs. Back on the General Settings page, I see that I now have log files. I'll download them and see what I've got. In the directory where I downloaded the logs, I extract them. Notice that there are text files with descriptive names. The files are prefixed with a number, which lets me see the order in which the APIs are called. Not all of these log files are going to make sense, and that's okay. For example, some of them contain calls generated by the DocuSign web console. I'll open the file 12 created post clickwrap.txt, since that looks like where the call to create a click wrap will be. At the top of the file, you can see that there's a trace token, which is used by the support team to help you troubleshoot issues you might have. After the timestamp, there's a post call to a URL that ends in click wraps. This is the endpoint used to make the API call to create a click wrap. The base64 encoded document file is really big because it's an image and also has to fit all of Huxley's majesticness. I'm going to delete all but the beginning and end of the base64 document to make things a little easier to see. Skipping down a bit, you can see the JSON request body, a header returned in the response, and the JSON response body. I'll put the request JSON in an online pretty printer to make it a little easier to read. There's a lot of great information here. You can see a click wrap name, a user ID, display settings, the click wrap document, and a status that is set to inactive. The display settings in particular give you some good clues about what values you can set to do this task programmatically. That's all there is to it. Now you can look through the log files to get some clues as to what your DocuSign integration code will need to do by completing the task first in the UI. A couple of things to keep in mind with API request logging are, first, the logs only capture actions taken by the current user and it can take a while before API calls are logged. Note that OAuth calls, including failed calls, are not logged. If you have questions about how to develop your integration with DocuSign, here are some resources. I recommend checking out the Developer Center how-to guides, going to Stack Overflow, reaching out to support, signing up for API office hours, or watching one of our quick start tutorials if you're just getting started. Don't miss the links to create your developer account and download your own quick start. That's it. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching from our YouTube channel, please post questions and comments below the video or email us at developers at DocuSign.com.